to track him down and, and get that egg. Run! Run! <laughs> okay. A little winded. <laughs> I love the dragons in this game. They're so awesome. This is one of the best parts of this I game. know. Just, that's why it's worth not skipping any of these guys, except for the ones that go, thank you for releasing me. Fuck those guys. Dude, they're, one of the, they're one no of the crash tag team racing categories for speedruns is soft lock percent. Soft lock the game as quickly as possible. <laughs> that's that's good. I know I missed a gem back there. I'm going to take care of this guy first. You missed a few. I know. The current world record is 34 seconds. 34 it's seconds. Soft lock the game in 34 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the PS2 version that did that. Yeah, it is the PS2 version. Yeah, because let's be honest, the PS2 version was not the PS2 was not the most stable game systems. No, it was not. Pretty much, if you're going to have a buggy or broken version of the game, it's going to be the PS2 version. Sometimes, sometimes. Unless you're, well, unless you're yeah. Aquaman Battle for Atlantis and just don't release on the PS2 because your game's so fucking broken it won't work for it. Yeah, apparently the three, the Xbox version is far more stable than the GameCube version. That's why I'm assuming there was no PS2 version of that game, just because the PS2 couldn't fucking handle how broken it was. <laughs> this game's really broken. We probably shouldn't release on the PS2. <laughs> We're gonna release anyways on the fucking Xbox, because you know all those Xbox gamers want to play fucking Aquaman. Everyone wants to play Aquaman Battle for Atlantis, right? By the way, that's how you get this fucking dragon. Thor! <laughs> Thank you for releasing me. Fuck you, Thor. You're one of the bad dragons. Don't Google that, by the way. Fuck you, Thor. No, don't Google bad dragon. Don't do it. Bad dragon. Oh, don't, I know what bad don't dragon do it. is. I know what bad dragon is. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hey, kids. We're done. That's what I love about this game. You can just run around it and just be just see your gem counter hit the max. Like, oh shit, we're done. Just like that. Oh, and he is totally correct. No, uh, no one watching this should Google Bad Dragon at all. And you're gonna do it anyways. I fucking know you are. You don't want to do it. Have fun with that. And don't, and don't bitch at us after you do, because we warned you. H have fun. Have fun with it. Uh, now we can go fight the boss. Well, we, technically we could fight the boss earlier, but I like to save the boss levels for the last part of the world. What's an or- oh. <laughs> like I said. Watch this. There's a Wikipedia page for Bad Holy Dragon. Flash, do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. I don't know if I forgot to mention that or not, but that dragon's dialogue changes depending on whether or not you finished a level or not. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned that in the lost recording we had. That's why I decided to show him off right there. Tracer route. When I was a kid, this level scared the shit out of me, and I'll, sh and I'll show you why very shortly. Oh, wow. Apparently there is a uh, documentary called Trace Around about nerd culture, and they do a uh, interview with the founders of Bad Dragon. Oh, good. You see that? You see that gray lump over there? Yeah. That's a dog. Watch this. Oh, shit. <laughs> when I was a kid, those guys scared the shit out of me. This is the boss level, isn't this it? This is the boss level, yeah. I like this level. These dogs only appear in this level, and thank fuck for that, because they are scary as shit. Can't you charge them? No. Oh, really? You can only flame them. That's why it's flame them from a distance, and when they wake up to try and attack, you jump and flame them again. That's the easiest way to get rid of them. Apparently, uh, part of the speed run of Spyro 1 involves using a glitch that lets you skip the final credits. Hmm, interesting. You know what it is? What's that? Uh, you engineer yourself in a way to where when you... Uh, Beat Nasty North, you die. When you, right as you're beating Nasty Nork, when he dies, you die. So and basically, you wheel yourself around and fall in the lava. When he dies, you actually are supposed to game over. Interesting. So it sends you back to the world. That way, you never have to watch the credits. I uh, liken these guys, the dogs, to the, uh, the fucking piano in Mario 64. Oh, really? And everyone who's played Mario 64 knows exactly what I'm talking about because nobody knows when that thing's gonna fucking spring up. And uh, that was a childhood horror I discovered on my own. Ow. Fuck you. Eat a dick. Okay. 
I'm a guy who loves horror games. I, I play games like SCP Containment Breach, uh -huh. and uh, that piano still scares me. Yeah, that piano's <laughs> fucked up, man. Nasty Nork has put I play the, the fucking most fucked up shit I can world. find when I can. I think I smell, I think a, barbecue. I smell a barbecue. Be careful, I was explaining to this somebody my obsession with bad games one day. I told the guy, uh, I love finding the worst possible video games I could find, and they were like, why would you subject yourself to that? And I was like, for one reason and one reason only. That way when somebody tells me they've played a bad game, I'm like, you haven't played a bad game. <laughs> this game is bad. Yeah, as, as part of the bosses go in this game, ooh, a twofer. Oh shit, never mind. Toasty's kind of... Yeah, as far as bosses go in this game, they're all kind of pathetic. Yeah, it's a sheep. It's a fucking sheep. Let's try that twofer again. Yeah! That's how we do it. Uh, you notice those dogs have fucking spines? Yeah. Fuck you. You better give me 15 gems. The game doesn't even explain, like, a story for Toasty. Nope. He's just a sheep. He's just here. And that's, uh, the first world completed. He's a sheepy sheep. Isn't this amazing? I that's love sheepy. this game. He's a sheepy sheepy sheep. I kind of want to watch this movie now. Oh, I was mentioning the technical aspects of this game earlier. Uh, Spyro invented something that would save the ass of so many 3D platform game developers. What? In the long run. The uh, lower poly models. Yeah. For uh, geometry. Like, Nintendo had already started experimenting with this with Mario 64. Like, if Mario's too far away from the camera, he swapped out with a lower poly model. But this game did it with for the geometry. You notice how the uh, textures are like really plain on those trees over there? Yeah. And as we get closer to them, the more detailed models and textures pop in. Huh, I never noticed that before. Never noticed that. I know. I know, and nobody fucking knows that about this game. Seemingly nobody. And it's just so fucking cool that this game, one that I hold in such high regard, is responsible for something that just saved the ass of so many developers. Draw distance was a big thing. And you may notice, this game doesn't fucking have one. We're going to go to the next world now. Peacekeepers. Where Pass we will, campers. Where we will find the peace is not being kept. Pass campers. So yeah, the peacekeepers are doing pretty are doing a pretty shit job of... Uh, Pass campers. Of their namesake. Pass campers. Welcome to Peacekeepers, Spyro. Look how our treasure has been turned against us and stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect 